Um, so we have 15 minutes to present um, the project, the concept, um, some numbers, and I'm really looking forward to the open discussion where we can talk a bit more about is crowdsourcing the right way to solve creative problems? Is this the right case to solve um, uh, the problem with crowdsourcing? And um, as Jürgen mentioned on, uh, I think, New York time, 7 o'clock tonight, the winning logo will be um, announced. There's a side event during the UN General Assembly. And um, yeah, um, I don't know if we can keep the promise to, to announce the logo here today, um, because certainly our heads will be chopped off twice. Um, I'm Bastian, I'm the founder of Javoto. This is Nadine, um, a community evangelist we work with since the early days. And um, yeah, let's get started. Just Briefly, what Javoto is, for those of you who don't know Javoto, we um, create work environments for creative talent. We believe that an open and collaborative social process, creative process, uh, drives motivation, nurtures passion, and often delivers great results. Um, we embrace co-creation. We also embrace crowdsourcing. We don't like the term crowdsourcing. That's why we don't use them on our end that much. Um, we can, we're not here to talk about Javoto your day, but if you have questions afterwards, we're happy to answer them. So Nadine will introduce the challenge briefly before we talk about the concept. Exactly. So uh, Jürgen already mentioned this uh, in the beginning a little bit. The basic challenge that uh, the foreign ministry t uh, brought to your voto and that they said, you know, we really want to solve this issue can basically be summed up in, in these kinds of images. We have uh, protests going on uh, in, in the Arab world, everywhere in the world, basically. And sometimes it's really hard to understand the messages that people are actually uh, wanting to send out to the world. So you don't speak the language, uh, you don't know are these the good guys, are they the bad guys? And it's really uh, helpful in a way to have a common symbol to uh, be able to communicate these issues. Um, we created a little film in the beginning of our challenge that uh, sums up this issue again. that you saw is pretty clear. Again, um, I guess human rights violations still occur uh, across the world and the plight of the people is basically everywhere across the world and there's no uh, way of telling about this. There's no common message for these people and instead there's this gap and we uh, asked uh, the people and designers across the world to help us fill this gap by creating a visual for it. And uh, of course, some of you might say, wait, what's the logo going to do? You know, how is that going to help? And um, to, to get an idea of what we really want to achieve, you know, think of what the HIV ribbon or what this global pharmacy symbol or what the Red Cross or Red Crescent and symbols like that that are so commonly understood can really achieve. And they, their orientation, they serve as um, a symbol that you can orient yourself when you don't speak a language in a specific country or they stand for... Uh, set of guidelines or um, uh, a sort of reliability of an organization that it's known across the world and it of course helps raise awareness around a cause for charity or fundraising as with the HIV ribbon and so this is the kind of thinking behind this um, logo for human rights that we have a common symbol which unites the rallying around it and which can also serve as a common symbol for different organizations. So you, of course, have you know, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, which each have their own uh, symbols and logos for their organizations, but there's nothing that they can both unite under. 
So um, to the concept, how did we approach this challenge? Um, yeah, as, as Jürgen mentioned, the Federal Foreign Office reached out to us. Um, a larger company called Google recommended us and said that they run creative challenges. They run challenges with international, with an international crowd, with creative talent, architects, designers, copywriters. So why don't you talk to them? Um, so we sat together, and the idea was already existent within the Federal Foreign Office in, in, in Berlin, but also within other Federal Foreign Offices around the world. So um, it was in total 10 nations um, trying to push this idea forward. And Felix Schwartz, um, who is the originator of this idea, I think um, he came to the idea when he was um, um, set to uh, organize an event. And he said, like, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm organizing an event for human rights. And I'm just taking a human rights symbol as um, kind of like signet um, leading visual ID for this event. And then he figured out that there is no such thing. Um, there's an Amnesty logo, there's Human Rights Watch around um, having strong visual IDs, but um, basically they're competing. And so he did a bit of research and, and figured out um, what has to be done in order to create this symbol. Um, and the general idea is let's invite people from all over the world into the process and let's, let's figure it out together. Let's try an open approach. Um, and this is basically an open call. Um, and as the internet is around, as many, more, many, many people are connected around the world, um, it's probably the best way to, to approach this um, online and, and not uh, through offline workshops and gatherings. Um, so we used our technology to set up a platform. So Yuvodo in this, this situation was the technology provider, and we helped them to shape the concept and to manage the participants along the way and help them out with communications. Um, so we set up um, this platform. It's, it's based upon the Yuvoto technology. It's, we call this software as a service delivery mode. Um, and um, we launched it on May 3rd, um, inviting people from all over the world to participate uh, during three months um, to submit their ideas, to join the conversation, to provide feedback to um, the, the submissions, to help to evaluate and rank the, the submitted um, designs. Um, and it was a pretty straightforward process. Um, we were a little bit um, not scared, but we questioned if, if we could, um, right from the very first moment on from May 3rd, um, tap into larger audiences and during a very short period of time, just three months, um, engage thousands of people from all around the world. Um, Nadine will talk a little bit about numbers, so I'm, I'm not uh, mentioning numbers right now, but it was really uh, amazing to work with um, this amount of people from all over the world. The platform was provided in 10 languages, so um, especially um, aligning intercultural gaps, um, uh, connecting people across countries, um, across cultures, that was um, on our end, I think, one of the key motivating factors why we said with Jovoto, this is a project we want to do. Um, our own community, we run it in English and German, we have some experience in that area, but um, that's, that's totally different than this, this case. Um, after the three months, we, we thought, OK, everybody can help to evaluate and rank the, the submissions. Um, but we need experts. We need human rights activists. We need um, designers who actually understand um, guiding design, uh, de design guidelines, um, formal criteria that um, a signet, a visual idea, has to fulfill. Um, and thanks to Jürgen um, and the TUPO conference, uh, which, which supported building this jury, um, as you mentioned, joining 10, no, 12 experts, um, Tina Roth Eisenberg, um, Candy Chang, um, Philip Appeloing, and, uh, and many more, um, amongst human rights activists like Ai Weiwei or um, Aung San Suu Kyi, Muhammad Yunus. So it's a pretty high profile jury. Um, also um, upping the reputation of the overall effort. Um, so after three months submission phase, this jury um, was set to evaluate the top 100 submissions and narrow them down to the 10 finalists. Um, this happened until September, no, August, August 31st. Um, and then the final step is, okay, now let's involve the people from all around the world again. Um, let's make it open so people do not have to register to vote. 
Um, let's work with media partners. Um, let's really broaden the conversation and let's let the people decide what the uh, winning, winning design should be. Um, this voting process took place throughout the last four weeks, basically. Uh, we know the result. Um, it's, it's, it was a thrilling process to see the head-to-head -head race um, of, of basically three logos within the process um, from the very first beginning. And it will be announced tonight in, in New York, as, as uh, already mentioned. Um, of course, this project would, would not be possible with uh, great partners helping to spread visibility like Google, helping to um, set up the event, for example, in New York, Cinema for Peace is organizing this, um, building a jury, connecting us with um, designers from all around the world, um, bringing experts into the game. Um, so thanks to Jürgen again. Universities, um, especially the University of Arts in Berlin, was very helpful, but many more universities from, from all around the world joined the process. And um, Design Made in Germany wrote about it a lot, Mashable wrote about it. It's, it was just, um, it turned into some kind of movement. Of course, critically reflected, but um, let's um, continue to the results. Okay, uh, Bastian promised that I'd show you some uh, numbers. Well, um, in the submission phase alone, I mean, we were really overwhelmed by the number of submissions we had sat together in the beginning and asked ourselves, okay, what can we really expect? You know, how many people are going to hear about this and um, go the way to come up with an idea and submit a logo? And in the end, we had really over 15,000 submissions. In, several variations so people did not only you know draw a little something and upload it but they went a long way and did several applications of their logos invited their friends to draw them and kind of uh, rally around those symbols that they created and so this the number of submissions was really a surprise to us um, really swept us away and we were yeah really um, uh, overwhelmed by that too from 204 countries and territories. Um, that was an especial uh, happy moment for us that we saw, okay, we really, really managed to do this internationally. We had visitors from almost every space in the world, even small and new countries like South Sudan, uh, not very many, and you can see that Germany is still you know, our epicenter, but we managed to roll this out to, to a lot of countries. In the submission phase, in the beginning, I mean, it's not only about submitting ideas, but it was also about commenting, giving feedback uh, through comments and ratings. And we had more than half a million people active in that, in that part. Um, Bastian already mentioned, we also managed to gather quite some press around it. Of course, we had a lot of high profile uh, jury members who were helping us spread the word by tweeting about it and sending us video messages. And we also had the big blogs like Mashable uh, reporting about us and we even made it into Colombian television at one point. Um, yeah, the final rating phase has only just closed a few days ago. Um, so we do know the winner. I don't think we ca are allowed to tell you the results today. Um, but we can at least show you the top 10 logos, Bastian. Um, yeah, that's the, that are the 10 finalists um, elected in a combined process by first the participants and jury members, and then again um, a public voting. Um, the formal criteria for the, for the, for the design, as we, we wrote it in the creative brief, was it has to be super simple so that somebody can take a finger and draw it into the sand. So I think you, if you have a look at it, some are pretty simple um, and some can be drawn in the sand with a finger. Some might be more challenging. Um, the interesting um, fact about the whole project was that there was no huge agency involved, no large media budget to spread the word. It was all pretty much um, a bottom-up approach, although initiated by governments, which I would say is a top-down approach and which I think is very challenging for the project itself, um, it was really about the people joining the process, bringing in friends, spreading the word, and launching a conversation that then turned, in a way, contagious. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's, um, it's not a logo, the winning logo is not a logo um, in the first line, but that's all I can say. <laughs> um, 
Uh, you have to wait until tonight. There will be a live stream um, on the website, humanrightslogo.net, um, where you can, where you can um, follow the conversation, the announcement, and um, see what's going on in New York. Um, so I hope you are patient, people. Um, because really we can't, we can't, we can't say it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>